Welcome back to the homestead, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Tonight, we're in back of our home here doing a little DIY home repair for you guys. This specifically is about how to replace siding that has rotted, and this specifically is T111 siding, uh, from, rotted from the bottom up. We're going to take a section here and repair it for you and show you how to do it properly. We're also going to talk about, a little bit about what not to do in terms of home construction that causes issues like this. So stay with us. If you want to see us just replace the siding and how to do that, and you're not interested in replacing the structure, skip ahead to right here in the video. Well, here's the main cause of our issue right here. We have a deck that was improperly attached to the house. There is no ledger board here that is visible. And this portion did have a ledger board on it, but it was screwed directly through the siding, directly right on top of the siding, right into the house. And that is not the way to do it. So I think I mentioned in a previous video that uh, about the other side of our house, about how bad this uh, deck construction was on the house. And here are the issues that it's caused. You can see the first 2x6 is completely disintegrated. Also, right above it is our rim joist, and that one in a certain uh, few areas is also completely disintegrated. Right there is pretty bad, and also this area here where the rot has started to go into the end of the uh, 2x6 floor joist, and we're probably going to sister up a floor joist there to give us some added extra support. It's routed through two out of the three uh, two by sixes on this perimeter beam. is very unstable and uh, not a good situation. So whenever doing any work like this, you want to make sure you create a support structure. If you're going to be working on any structure of the house, you need to replace uh, the carrying capacity of that structure you're removing with something else. So in this case, this is not carrying any, uh, any weight or, at all, but this jack post is. And we've got another one just behind us over here. Thanks for being here on the channel. I want to remind you to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also to go down below and hit that Amazon link to our tool store that's got everything that we own and use here on our homestead on a daily basis. It goes to help out our family and we really appreciate it. As you experience home builders out there know you, we've also got another issue in this spot and that is our moisture barrier, our uh, vapor barrier here on the house. Now, this, built, this house was built in uh, the early 1980s, and of course tar paper was used. They didn't have the uh, modern house wrap, or if they did, they didn't use it out here. This is probably cheaper. But it is not extended down to protect the rest of the wood structure all the way to the foundation. And that's a big problem. They, I don't know if they ran out of money or ran out of time or what, or it was just to contain the insulation, but it was done improperly because it should have extended down. That would have given a little tiny bit of protection to all that water coming back into the house off the deck. And uh, maybe this would have lasted a, a long time uh, more than it actually did, but I'm, uh, I'm really surprised to see this, or maybe I'm not too surprised to see this. That's how home, home construction goes sometimes. Let's fix this siding and show you how to do that. Okay, first things first, you're going to want to probe or use a moisture meter and find out how far up your siding is rotten. At that point, we need to cut it off, but we need a straight line. So let's use our chalk line. And snap a line straight across. We're going to run our circular saw all the way down, and that's going to give us a nice straight line to work with to put our flashing and our new paper behind it. Now that we have our setting cut to where we need it to be, we are going to cut the old tar paper to be even with the bottom of our siding. 
The reason for that is our flashing needs to go behind this building paper and that will cause any water that comes down in between the siding and the old tar paper here to come down onto our siding and come out of the house and away from the new siding which is going to go up underneath it. From there we are going to put our new wrap behind all of that and up underneath the old one. Think of shingles and how they're layered. The water comes down on the outside and it won't come up behind it. If you put it this way it's going to get behind. So everything needs to be layered like shingles as you come out and that's going to prevent any other water damage from getting in here or getting on our new piece of siding which we're going to put on the bottom here. We'll show you how to do that in a second. Let's get our new house wrap tucked up behind the existing house wrap. Tuck it up there a good three or four inches and we'll get it nice and flush. Once our house wrap is in place and it's tucked up behind our old house wrap, our felt paper, we are going to go by and just put a little bit of silicone over top of each one of those staples. We didn't have the proper fasteners to fasten the house wrap, but this is perfectly acceptable. Now it's time to install our flashing that goes in between the two pieces of siding. We're going to go up behind our existing or old house wrap, that felt paper, and on top of the new felt paper so it's just underneath our siding. Now you want to leave a gap between the bottom of the siding and the new flashing and that is because if any water sits on this flashing at all it's going to wick into the bottom of our siding cut. Now we should paint the bottom of this and we're probably going to do that but you want to stand it off at least one eighth of an inch from the bottom of your existing siding. Cut out for any obstructions, like we've got a water spigot down here, and tack it into place with a few finish nails through the siding. So our last part of the process, of course, is to hang our new piece of siding. Now we've cut it to a length where it comes completely over our beam and actually hangs down uh, about an inch inch and a half below that beam. That is something that they didn't do originally in, which is also incorrect. So we're just going to snug this up, align our siding with the siding above, and we're going to come underneath here. Now notice we've also painted the top for a little extra protection. We painted the top of our uh, new piece of siding here. I'm going to tack that into place with some finish nails. We did have to special order this particular flashing because we couldn't get it deep enough for our T111 siding, but you can find that. Uh, we found it on homedepot.com uh, and we had a special order to the store, which was not a big problem. I'll put the link to this particular one that fits with the T111 siding in the description below if you want to go check that out. Also, any of our tools that we have here that helped us along in the process, those are always going to be in the description below on our Amazon store. So if you want to hit that link, go over there and check those out, we'd really appreciate it. It's a really simple process and that's all there is to replacing this siding. Make sure you get everything overlapping properly so all the water comes out behind and over the top on this particular flashing. We thank you for being here. We're always grateful for it. And we want you to go visit us on our website, countrylivingexperience.com. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it on social media, all the above. That all helps us out. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day, and we'll see you next Tuesday on our next video. Bye.